Hi friends, Rebecca here, the Dragon Librarian from Farmington Community Library, and Elwing and I are here today to talk to you about some really great books that we think you might enjoy. So this week is actually Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, my friends! And this is the time of year where everybody starts thinking about things that they're really thankful for, things in their life that they're grateful for. And a lot of times that translates into family, friends, maybe their job, their health. Those are some of the first things that you think about when you think about being thankful. But what about books? Where do books fall into play here? I mean, you can be really thankful for books, right? I think so too, Elwing. There are so many books that I am just so thankful for and so many authors that I'm thankful for. And it's interesting because everybody reads for different reasons, right? So that means that there are a multitude of reasons why people are thankful for books. So to make it easy, I'm going to limit it today to just three different reasons and books that fall within that scope. So we can be thankful for books because they can take us on a journey maybe take us to a place that we would maybe never have seen before. Um, we can be thankful for books that are a comfort to us, things that, that bring us solace and bring us, uh, you know, understanding. And we can be thankful for books that just make us happy because happiness is so important, right? Especially when you're reading. So we're going to talk about books that make me so thankful because they take me on a journey, they're comforting, or they just make me happy. And this is a great time of year to think about things like that. Think about books that you're thankful for and what authors have influenced you and made a big difference in your life. So the first book I want to talk about is Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. And this is a book that I am thankful for because it has been a very big comfort to me in my life. And I know there are so many jokes about this book and it has gotten a lot of a lot of heat in the day just for being kind of silly and um, but I think it is absolutely beautiful it's got a wonderful message and for me it was really comforting um, before I moved out here to Michigan I was actually in a really abusive marriage and for a long time I thought that it was my fault and that I couldn't do anything to change it this is the book that changed my way of thinking completely and got me to understand that it was not my fault and that I deserve to live my own life. Here is the passage that I want to share with you guys that really meant so much to me. This is what got me thinking. If your life has become a trash compactor, then you are allowed to try to escape that trash compactor, whatever it takes. By escaping your own trash compactor of an existence, you can revive reinvigorate and reinvent yourself almost at a cellular level what if your life belongs to you wow I know that might not seem like much but to me it just caused an explosion in my heart and made me think about things in a whole new way that I hadn't before so if you haven't read this book what it's about is a woman who is going through some some rough times and she takes a trip three trips actually, one to Italy, one to India, and one to Bali, and learns different life lessons along the way. And it's just such a beautiful story. And Elizabeth Gilbert is just a hilarious author. She, she's she got a really great sense of humor. You feel like you're friends with her by the end of this book. And it's just absolutely wonderful. She puts a lot of things in perspective that you might not have thought of before. So this is absolutely such a great book that I am really thankful for. Eat, Pray, Love. Next, I want to talk about a book that I'm thankful for because it took me on a journey to a place that I absolutely have fallen in love with. And it is called A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. Now, this is a book that he wrote later on in his life, but it's actually a memoir of his time that he spent in Paris in the early 20s while he was writing his very first book. And it's a description of the city of Paris in the 20s. And it's just so unbelievably beautiful. I love Paris with all my heart, even though I've never been there. And this is the book that made that happen. It explains the different, the different boulevards and the different cafes and the places that he ate and drank and the friends that he had. All the different authors from that time period like Gertrude Stein and Ezra Pound and F. Scott Fitzgerald. They're all detailed here in this book. And it's just... It's an amazing, amazing story. 
And sometimes it's great to read about a place that you can't go to, especially I think in these times right now with this pandemic and the quarantine and, you know, you can't go to Europe or you can't take trips like you used to. So reading a book like this just transports you to a whole nother place. And it is magical, absolutely magical. So that is A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. If you wanted to learn more about Paris, if you wanted to learn more about writing or authors from the 20s and that were living in, in Paris at the time, this is a great book, A Movable Feast. And last, I want to talk about a book that just makes me so happy. And I'm so thankful for how happy this book makes me. It's called Harry's Trees by John Cohen. Look at that cover. I love that shimmery gold leaf. So this is a book about chance circumstances, chance encounters, and kind of about fate also. It's about a, a man who has lost his wife in a tragic experience and a woman who has lost her husband in a tragic experience on the same day and the different circumstances that bring them together. It's also about a little girl who's hurting and finds hope again. It's about this librarian who works at this crumbling old library who gives it new, new purpose and new joy. And it's just, I cried so hard when I read it the first time, but not out of sadness, just out of pure joy joy. It is an absolutely beautiful book. It is about just the power of, of people's connections with each other. It's also about the power of stories, which I just absolutely love. And it's fantastic. And this is Harry's Trees. If you just need a book to give you, uh, to, to put a smile on your face, that would just make you so, so, so happy. I really, really recommend this book. I read it at the library and then I had to go out and immediately buy my own copy of it because I just fell in love with it so hard the first time I read this. Harry's Trees by John Cohen. Well, that's what I've got for you guys today. I hope that these books sound really interesting. If so, you can give us a call or visit our website to put them on hold and we will bring them out to you during uh, with our curbside service that we have going on right now. And like I said, it's a great time to think about some books that you're thankful for and, and why you're thankful for them. And next time I see you, you'll have to let me know what books are on that list for you. Thank you so much, my friends. Have a great week and have a happy, happy Thanksgiving.